what I would like to do now is proceed straight on uh, with Patrick's talk. Uh, oh, no, Patrick, this is an order. <laughs> <laughs> with Patrick's talk, because we cut Patrick out last year, and we don't want to do the same thing again. Um, if you could just speak briefly, Patrick, on uh, progress in restoring the great fur reflector. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I promise that I, I will be very brief, but just give you a late update on what's happening over there. As you know, way back in the last century, the biggest telescope ever built was the Burr Reflector, the 72 inch, built by the third Earl of Ross, and set up at Burr Castle in the middle of Ireland. And that telescope we used to discover the spiral of nature of the object we now know to the galaxies. And the hope built, made entirely by the third Earl, uh, it's been tallied now since 1909, and we are now getting it back into water again. Could I have my first slide, please? And there, first of all, is a picture of Burr Castle in the middle of Ireland, the seat of the Earl's Ross. Slide, please. Next slide. And there is the third Earl of Ross, uh, the man entirely responsible. He wasn't actually trained as a scientist. He went to Trinity College and took engineering there, but as an astronomer, he was purely self-taught and decided to make the world's biggest earth. Next slide, please. And there's a picture of the third Earl, the statue of the third Earl uh, at Parson Town. He built a 36-inch reflector, great success, and then decided to go on to build a 72-inch. Next slide, please. Uh, <laughs> Australian, Australian view. Let me turn that one down, please. Uh, now, the point is this. In those days, engineering requirements were not what they are today, and he knew quite well if he tried to build a fully mobile telescope, then he would fail. Therefore, he accepted the limitation. Two massive stone walls, the pillar at the bottom, could see only to either side of the millennium, and therefore see only a narrow strip of the sky, and he accepted that limitation. Next slide, please. And there is a picture of the third Earl observing, complete the top hat. You will that. Next slide, please. <laughs> and there is an old passage of the other telescopes. Uh, first of all, there is the old 36 inch, and that has disappeared. We don't know where it is, where it is, where it is. and there is the 72 inch. Next slide, please. <coughs> Uh, the other little postcard, the Israel London News, showing various cases of it. Next slide, please. And there, of course, is a picture of the famous spiral of the Whirlpool Galaxy, drawn by the third Earl, when this came to use in 1845. And that was the first time he seemed to be seen as spiral. And that day, only the virtual is to show the spiral nature of the galaxy. And say so the third Earl was a remarkable man, it showed that no one ever came to the helpful advice and went away unheard of. Next slide, please. If there are things also, there are now a spiral picture. Next slide, please. And also, there is a famous Crab Nebula. Uh, he called it the Crab, by the way. The name of the Crab Nebula for M1 does come from the third hour. Next slide, please. Uh, the Dunbell Nebula, the Arpecula, another kind of thing. Next slide, please. Solar system, a drawing of the equator Aristarchus with the Honors of Sally, the most detailed ever made, I think, up that time. Next slide, please. And there are the crater Hecateus on the moon ledge. The right vibration area. Next slide, please. Penis also. Jupiter. So the red red spot where it is in the two. Actually, those drawings were made after the third Earl died by this one over there who skidded him. Next slide, please. And there are more of Jupiter. Next slide, please. And there is a picture of the head and it was when I first saw it way back in the, in the, in the 1950s. Now, the third Earl died in 1868. His son, also a metronomer, the fourth Earl, was interested mainly in measuring the tiny quantities of heat sent us from the moon and didn't use big a great deal. And correctly, the third effector was phased out. You couldn't drive it, couldn't even photograph it. It was a rather an astronomical dinosaur, and frankly, it had gradually petered out. The third Earl died in 1909, and this little skip was left there. Uh, the event was taken away, stored in the sand for the end of London, and the was just left there with the massive stone walls. And frankly, it was very forlorn when I first saw it in the, in the, uh, in the 1950s. Uh, and uh, the idea then of bringing it back into use seemed rather far fetched. I think it would be right to actually to come from me. Next slide, please. There's the other one. In, in, 19, in uh, 1970, the present uh, Countess of Ross is there, and you can see how forlorn it looks. Next slide, please. Uh, there it is again, a little bit later on. There's a sign that clears up. Next slide, please. Uh, there's the working party. The present of the is lost there. And get you that picture. Next slide, please. And uh, there is the grinding tool. With the, and the youth was grinding there. Next slide, please. And there's the present of the Ross. 
uh, in the 1970s, which he clearly underestimated, but it was still absolutely firm. If she holds on the tube there. Next slide, please. Uh, there, the there, 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 Next slide, please. And there, the side of the castle, you can see there, the massive stone wall. And when we decided to try and get the thing working again, everything we had to depend upon were those stone walls still firm and safe. Luckily, it turned out as they were. Next slide, please. And look at the camera. There's the VAA meeting in 1990, so we went there. Next slide, please. And uh, there, at the start of the restoration. You know, what we decided to do was this. Uh, there was no attempt made to get any work uh, into our research instrument. You can't do that. The idea was to get it back into working order and use it again to look at the sky, but not to make a research instrument. It's the only that was purely historical. The latest reason I decided was into William. Right? And there are the restoration going on exactly. And there you see things are going on there at uh, our pace now. The land that they put back, stone wall has been repaired, tube is repaired. Next slide, please. And there uh, another picture, and he shows almost up there, upright this time, with the addition earlier on this year. Next slide, please. And uh, there, I think my last slide, that shows the film as it is now. It's back in order again. The optics are not there. The mirror is at the science museum. We'll get it back eventually, certainly, having a second metal mirror made. And they couldn't have the first slide in uh, early next year when we get the, the replacement metal in. Him. And my great idea then is to put a CCD on it and actually take a photograph of the Whirlpool Galaxy drawn by the third earl way back in 1845. It'll be a big idea, this marvelous telescope back in action again. It's going to be available for people to see, people to use, and of course the carry out of the historical instrument is unrivaled. And certainly it'll be a great pleasure. And when we started, I think very few of us thought we could get it back in action. Now we're going to do that, and it'll be a wonderful thing. And then a few months see a few weeks' time now, this brand new telescope again set aside in the sky. And remember, this is um, one of the great telescopes in this district, and this is the first ever to see the spiral gas. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Patrick. If you want somebody to speak briefly and succinctly, Patrick is definitely the man. Now, I just want